In this video, we're going to talk about the Pentagon UFO, the one that was released back in December 2017. And we're going to dive into some technical details uh, about the motion of flight of this object and how it might be explained by pretty conventional engineering principles. And we'll also talk about some statements by Luis Elizondo, Mr. Big L, the uh, former military intelligence officer over at the Pentagon that was studying UFOs, and uh, how I believe the uh, deeper reason, and perhaps the real reason, why the military is interested in studying UFOs is because uh, electronics will go offline and uh, fail to function when these unidentified flying objects are getting too close. Mr. Luis Elizondo, uh, the uh, former intelligence officer for the Department of Defense, seems like an intelligent and honorable guy, and he has acknowledged the fact that the Department of Defense had some equipment problems uh, when uh, dealing with these UFOs. And uh, in this coast-to-coast uh, -coast interview, he talks about this. Yes, there was there were incidents in which in which uh, DoD technical equipment uh, appeared to be uh, in some cases um, manipulated or or even disabled uh, in a, in a manner that was not advantageous to us. Now that is what I call a diplomatic answer, but uh, in all fairness, I don't think any former or current employee of the uh, Department of Defense is going to stand up in uh, front of the Congress or uh, uh, in the public media and admit to a vulnerability of the uh, Defense Department and perhaps can't even get their atomic missiles off the ground when uh, one of these uh, objects is flying nearby. I don't want to speculate on uh, what uh, is behind this phenomena but there are uh, plenty of reports in the public media about uh, how UFOs uh, are connected uh, to uh, electrical equipment and how it can make radios go silent, it can make ignition electrical systems in cars uh, stop working, it can uh, prevent uh, missiles from being launched from military bases, etc. As I started in poor my commander, our missiles began to shut down. We lost alert status on all 10 missiles while this object was above our facility. When we queried the fault system, all missiles reported guidance and control system failure. We had a, a way of querying faults within the system called Versa. It's a voice-activated system, uh, and we were getting channel, channels 9 and 12, which is guidance and control system. At the same time, we had indicator lights showing security violations at two of the launch facilities where the missiles were physically located. While Lieutenant Mywald reported the incident to the wing command post, I phoned upstairs and directed the security alert team to be sent to those launch facilities with security violations to investigate those indications. At that time, the FSC reported to me that the object had flown off at high speed. When the security alert team arrived at the affected LFs, and I'll brief, uh, LFs meaning launch facilities, uh, they reported seeing the object hovering over those sites. As they approached closer to the object, uh, they lost all communications with the FSC. After speaking to the wing command post, Lieutenant Mywald informed me that the same thing happened at another flight. And when the first missile went down in his flight, uh, they reported that there were UFOs overhead as the missiles went down. He lost all 10 of his missiles within, in rapid succession. That, that incident occurred on March 16th, 1967. He launched them and they went down? No, no, the, the missiles were not launched. <laughs> the, uh, uh, he just reported, they reported that the objects were above them, and at that point the missiles started shutting down. Yeah, disabled. 
the sensitive information network, uh, SIN cables that carried the signals for, uh, to the missile systems were triply shielded uh, from electromagnetic interference. In my opinion, we did not have the technical capability to produce a machine then or now that would be able to instigate the failure mode of these missiles identified in the unit wing history. <clears throat> in addition, the unidentified objects displayed the physical and flight characteristics that no known aircraft type could achieve then or now. Therefore, I have concluded these objects were non-terrestrial in origin. Uh, Luis Elizondo, he is uh, asking people to contribute if they have any suggestions on what might be going on. As people with, with additional expertise and, and, and experience and backgrounds continue to look at the videos, uh, and not just Gimbal, I think any and all videos, uh, we will begin to, to put together more pieces of the puzzle. Um, there are experts I would submit now that, that are out there, perhaps uh, within this audience that is watching this video now, that have the ability to look at some of these videos and help us have a better understanding of what exactly we're looking at. With his request in mind, I'd like to share my opinion as an electronics engineer on what I think might be going on as an electrical effect of physics. If you look at the uh, UFO Tic Tac video from the uh, DOD, uh, you may not initially see anything unusual, especially around the area uh, where the object is accelerating to the left. But if you slow the video down or if you study the video frame by frame, you will see up to three frames that look like there's some heavy interference. Um, this is about a period of uh, 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds of interference. And um, my guess is that this is uh, some sort of uh, energetic interference from the UFO through the uh, skin or the shield of the electrical components of the F-18. This is uh, quite unusual because uh, I'm assuming uh, most engineers would design a very protective and shielded uh, case around these uh, electronic components that are used in these uh, fighter aircrafts. You don't want any uh, uh, electrical interference or any outside energy source to um, mess with the uh, systems on board the uh, fighter plane. And what you will also notice is that it seems like the electrical interference only happens at the beginning of the acceleration of the object to the left. This to me seems to indicate uh, that the engine or the propulsion method of this object uh, is just turned on briefly less than a uh, second and the uh, object is accelerating to the left and moving through the earth uh, atmosphere uh, more or less friction free uh, very similar to the air puck uh, on an air uh, hockey game after it's been struck uh, by the player this is uh, unlike a rocket or an airplane that uh, requires the engine to produce a continuous force to push through the earth atmosphere and the friction and accelerate the craft uh, up to the desired speed. And now we're getting to the most interesting part of this video. Uh, how an object uh, can accelerate so quickly uh, without uh, crushing any occupants inside the craft. Uh, according to the uh, military pilot uh, David Fravor. The object seemed to know ahead of time his flight plan and actually moved uh, opposite or to the uh, point uh, of, of his flight plan before he had actually engaged his aircraft. So there, there may be some uh, intelligence uh, inside the craft. Um, we don't know what that is, but uh, it's very unlikely that it was a remote drone or some sort. Now the big question is, what technologies can be used to accelerate an object uh, and the occupants faster than a speeding bullet without uh, crushing the occupants to the uh, wall inside the craft. There's actually several references in uh, 
conventional literature in physics how there is a secondary type of electric field with unique properties uh, that might explain the uh, locomotion or the propulsion of these UFOs. And there is no need to dive into any uh, weird uh, space-time theories, uh, wormholes and Star Trek type uh, concepts uh, for understanding uh, propulsion methods uh, through space. Um, I'm an engineer and I like uh, getting my feet on the ground and uh, using traditional concepts, uh, if at possible, that uh, are very proven or at least uh, have been experimentally verified. Uh, Dr. Harold Putoff, uh, which is a guy I greatly admire, has some uh, very beautiful theories on uh, space-time engineering, etc. But uh, it is largely unproven, and uh, until I see some experimental evidence, I like to stick with some more down-to-earth uh, approaches. What this means in practice is that a craft that is built uh, around the concept of a dielectric field as a method of propulsion, that the occupants uh, could be sitting uh, at a table or in a chair and drinking their coffee or whatever they drink they're drinking, and uh, not experience any forces on their body or in their drink uh, when the craft is accelerating or changing speed in a different direction uh, because of the fact that the dielectric field is uh, all penetrating and is uh, sucking or pushing on the atomic matter equally or similarly in all the matter in the craft and the biological bodies that are inside the craft. Please check my website for further information on uh, the forces from dielectric fields. As a side note, uh, Luis Elizondo uh, did mention, and I had a clip uh, earlier in this video, that he's looking for people to uh, help him figure out what these UFOs are. Uh, but uh, within a few days of that first uh, comment, uh, he says basically they've got it all figured out. So here's the clip, and I'd like to know exactly what it, what he really means on this uh, latest clip. We are a heck of a lot closer to really understanding the the physics and the 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 the, the, the principles of flight. Um, than we ever had them before. In fact, we, I think we, we finally may have cracked the code collectively on, on how this thing works.